Three. Welcome everybody to another episode of The New Breed. So The New Breed is every Monday. It's one of the episodes on IMC TV, right? If you go on, eventually on the IMC website, there's gonna be several, several channels that someone who's not an IMC nation, you know, someone on the outside, uh, or even any IMC member can go on the website and they can select a channel. So the idea is like, just like Netflix, you can select a movie on demand, right? On the website, there's gonna be an on, dem on demand channel every Monday, broadcast Monday through Sunday. And every Monday through Sunday, you can choose on someone's channel and jump on in. And some of the topics that I talk about, that I like to talk about are one, mind and communication mindset and mentality what's the what's the mindset needed oh let me record oh what's the mindset needed in order to approach life and not just be a spectator in life be somebody in life be somebody who creates an impact someone who can change lives someone who can get the job done that right now i see several people working right we got tattoo addicts right one of the top tattoo artists in orange county we got Jaime, we got Marcelo, and there's different people in here, right? And I, I know a lot of every, almost every guy here is working right now. And that's the beauty of this is that you can plug on in and regardless of your field of career or profession that you choose to, to take part in, this is the idea that we're the guys, we're the men or women, there's women watching this channel too, it's open to a public audience, right? We're the men and the women uh, worldwide who, say they're going to get the job done no matter what job it is now for me in my life some of the jobs that i've taken on some of the let's say badges or some of the titles that i take on is i'm an imc monk right and what does that come with what's the responsibility of what an imc monk is first and foremost if you're going to claim to be an imc monk right show us your life from the moment you wake up to the moment you sleep at night, is this the type of lifestyle that if there was a God, if there was something divinely watching you and I right now, would they look down upon you as the son or the daughter of the divine and be proud of what they saw? You see, this is how we can keep our ethics in. Earlier today, I was reading uh, this book. This is, if you haven't read this book, it's called Ethics, Introduction of Ethics by L. Ron Hubbard. And I like to open this book often. And let me just read you guys a small segment from this. I'm just going to randomly open it, okay? And some of the language that's used in this book, it's written so, it's written so beautifully to understand what ethics is. And this is something that's going to keep you safe in life, is your own ethics, is making the right decision good and between good and bad. So let's see. I'll start here. This is why the criminal leaves clues on the scene, why people develop strange incap, I can't even tell that word, incapacitation, <laughs> why people develop strange incapacitating, I can't say that word, it's a big word, but I need to learn that word. Look, one thing when you read L. Ron Hubbard, he says, don't skip over a word that you don't understand. If you don't know the word, make sure you get the definition because by missing one word, you lose the context of the message. And to understand what L. Ron Hubbard is writing at the, at the level that he was teaching it, one has to learn that word. So right now, I can't even say this word. It's a difficult word. But I'm going to skip it for, for the sake of the lecture. And why they cause themselves accidents and even decide to have an accident. When they violate their own ethics, they begin to decay. So take a look in your life. Just that sentence alone. When they violate their own ethics, they begin to decay. Anyone who's done a wrong act, let's say if you're a criminal, right? You're, you have the idea growing up, you saw somebody stealing chocolates or you saw somebody at the liquor store and they stole an item. And then growing up, you're like, oh, maybe I should start doing that. Right. And then time goes forward. You take on that action. You saw somebody else do it. You and your own mind said, well, if they did it right, usually it was a mother or a father or a cousin, a, a friend, whatever you saw them do it. And you're like, well, let me do it myself. Then you do the bad act. Right. And time goes forward that stealing of a chocolate, that act of doing something out of ethics, stealing, right? It then leads on to another bad act. It then leads on to another bad act. And before you know it, the person's done so many out ethic actions that it's so hard to overcome these things. 
And so Al Ron Hubbard says, when they violate their own ethics, they begin to decay. They do this all on their own without anybody else doing anything. You see, just take a look right now. You see, wherever you're at right now, take a look. If you're at work, if you're driving, just take a look at the condition of society. Take a look at the condition of people. Take a look at the condition of the people in here. You can see when a person is either shining and emanating, is full of life, has a lot of vitality and energy, and you could see the people who are starting to decay little by little by little by little. And this is huge when you can understand that, oh shit, let me take a look in the mirror and see what I look like. What's my Facebook representing to the world? Because the first thing, if we're gonna use body language, the first step in, let's say, communication, anywhere you go, let's say you're about to walk into the store, the first communication is your body, your face posture. What are your eyes saying? How does your face look? Are you tense inside? Are you upset? Are you dark? Are you dimming inside? Or are you somebody who has certainty, someone who has life, someone who has energy, you see, if you're a man watching this right now, the first thing that a woman is going to notice in you is how much life do you have? How much energy can you provide and, and provide to her? Not just to her, but into your own life. How much energy are you on a daily basis pushing out to the world? You see, the woman who can see or sense a man that has a lot of energy, not in an energy that it's like, you know, uh, fucking out the wall, I mean, the type of energy that she is magnetized by. And what is that, right? You see the guy who has less energy, the guy who's lazy, the guy who's fat, the guy who has zero discipline, that's not the guy that she wants to be around. She wants to be around the type of guy who's creating, who's building. You see the masculine energy, if we're gonna define these two energies, masculine and feminine energy, masculine energy is the drive force. It's the force that goes forward direct. It cuts through the, the bullshit, the illusions. Masculine energy is that thing that, that pushes force. It's a force. Feminine, en feminine energy is receptive. It receives, right? Now, the beauty of this art of yin-yang is that we carry both poles. We carry both sides of the pendulum, right? We carry both feminine and masculine qualities, so when do I exercise my feminine qualities? Well, anytime there's a, a teacher speaking, let's say for transcendental meditation, TM is yin, it pulls me in. I'm no longer trying to create and build when I'm in TM, I'm in a yin mode, silence. I'm receiving, I'm quiet. When it's time to produce and do business, when it's time to work, that's when I'm in a yang mode. Where's my next deal? Who do I got to talk to? How can I create today? Even starting this lecture, it takes energy to create this. So start to measure your day is how are you exercising your energy? You know, I think, I believe um, there was like this ancient or one of these Chinese traditional, these traditional like Eastern mysticism groups where all day they just focus on their energy levels. You see, we're, we're, we're so responsible with our energy. Like, just think about it. How, have we been thinking about the idea of, okay, how am I feeling throughout my day? Why is it that some days you're up, 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 and then other days you have zero energy to do anything? Some days you're fucking inspired to work out, and other days you don't have the energy to do. Some days you're full of creativity. You want to start video blogs. You want to start lecturing. You want to start reaching out to people. You want to start a business. And then other days you have zero inspiration to do any of that shit. What the fuck? Where's the inconsistency happening? Why is that? Well, let's take a look. First and foremost, you got to fall in love with your life. Like truly, you got to look in the mirror and first and foremost, before anything, fall in love with you. You got to fall in love with you. That if you're a heavier set man, look, I used to be a heavier set guy and I'm still working on me, but damn, do I love my body. Damn, do I, when I look in the mirror, I see so much progression. I see so much courage. I see so much self-love that it's taken to even get to this point. 
And that's the type of energy I want to build off of. If you're the guy right now saying, damn, I don't like my body. I fucking hate my body. That's not the type of energy to build off something. You build because you love what you have right now. Let's say, for example, your finances, you have a job or you have a career, you have a profession, a business. First and foremost, you got to fall in love that if you made $1 off your own energy, you made it off ethically, you made it off your passion. If it's just $1, dude, that's the type of energy that it takes to build a multi-million dollar business if that's what you want. So take a look at where are you pushing your energy and what type of energy are you creating off of? Because that's going to be most important. How are you building your relationships? You know, me and my girl were having a conversation not too long ago, or I think it was a couple of days ago. And it's crazy because last night in lecture it was brought up again, uh, is take a look. And this is not the case for a lot of people is when you were born, what type of energy were you born from? If you had married parents, if your family was together and they were married, you were conceived off love. That's a big deal. Because if let's say we take it to look at the same extreme, what if, what if a child in this life was born with a woman who was raped and she decided to keep the baby? That child was born off rape. Damn. And then that child has to go into this life and be a model citizen. It's going to be very tough, very difficult. So let's just take a look, man. How many advantages do you have in life that if you have a good family, I know everybody here has a good family. Why? Because you're still on the path. You're on the path of evolving yourself. You're on the path of becoming a better person. You're on the path of overcoming whatever obstacles and barriers you've been placed on in life. Because I am. And that's a self-love that you can always tap into. And I know when we talk about this love concept amongst men, it's like, oh, that sounds so gay. <laughs> you know, for a long time, I couldn't even tell people I loved you because I didn't love myself. I couldn't tell my family I loved them. That was so fucking weird. It was so weird to tell them that I couldn't say those words because growing up, I didn't hear that enough. And if you're anything like me, I'm sure that it was very difficult for even your family, your friends, your siblings to say, hey, man, I love you, dude. I love who you are. How rare is that shit? How rare is that experience? But see, I want to live the type of experience where that's available. Now, this is where alchemy, this is where communication, this is where true magic is, is that you in your life, you got to take responsibility that if you're the better communicator in any scenario and everybody that's here, you must be the better communicator than anywhere else that you go. You got to be the better communicator in your relationship. You got to be the better communicator in your friendships. You got to be the better communicator in your business. Because if you're not, then who is? You see, the better communicator is the one who sets the frame, is the one who creates with his language and his words. So let's say you're about to build a relationship. Off of what energy are you going to build your relationship off of? Is it going to be off the energy of hate? How many relationships are people in that they hate each other? There's so many. People get in relationships and bring all their baggage of bullshit on another person. And so much resentment is created, so much toxicity, so much pain, so much failure. But you got to take a look. What kind of energy do you want to build your business off of? Passion, excitement, fulfillment. You see, I don't want to have the type of relationship where love isn't available. I want love to be plentiful. I want to live the type of relationship that trust is available. Respect, honor, integrity, family. And when you think of relationship, don't just think boyfriend, girlfriend. Think of you and your family, you and your friends, you and your tribe you and your coworkers, because we impact our lives based on our ability to communicate. That the more cleaner of a vessel you are of communication, the better you can start to impinge your communication onto the people around you. So take a look right now. I see Jaime, bro. You're like ringing in my mind a lot. The people around you in your office, how is your communication 
impacting those around you on a daily basis. First off, your body language. Like you, I could see that you're dressed really well. You smell, I'm sure you smell 100% good because I know you like cologne, right? So immediately, that's a positive effect in communication, right? There's a character who's self-aware in his image. He's self-aware in how he smells. He's self-aware of his scent, how he looks. Now, let's take it another level. When you communicate to other people, what's the flavor of your communication? How are people feeling after a conversation with you? Now, again, we got to take a look inside. How are we feeling within ourselves? If right now you're at work and you're like, man, I'm just so fucking tired. I, I want to get the fuck out of here, go home already. Then that's the vibe that you're going to give out to everybody else. Right? God, man, I, I can't fucking wait to get the fuck up out of here. Fuck all these people, man. These people are fucking ridiculous, dude. Fuck all this shit. Right? Then that's the, that's the feeling that everybody's going to feel. So what's your inner voice saying in all the environments you find yourself in? Let's say you're working out and you're like, oh man, fuck this shit, dude. I'm never going to lose weight. This shit's some bullshit. Fuck all this shit. Who, who, whoever does this is fucking... Look, that's your inner... Your, that's your self-talk. Your self-talk is your cell talk. Like a cell, a little cell, right? Our body is made up of billions of cells. Your self-talk, the way you talk to yourself, is your cell talk. Most people... They cause their own illnesses. In the normie world, dude, people are constantly putting negative words into themselves, into their cells. They're saying things like, oh, I always get sick when I take a cold shower. No, I can't do that. If I eat that food, it makes me feel real. Like, dude, like, I'm, I'm listening. I'm like, what the fuck are you saying? You're literally destroying yourself with your own words. How many words are you using? How many thoughts is your mind speaking that are self-destructive because you got to take a look at that there's nothing else going on outside of you in relation to life there's a voice in your head right and in this fucking head is someone talking who's talking you're the one that's observing it if you can hear the voice in your head whether it's saying something positive about life or whether it's saying something negative about life, recognize there's a voice in your head and it must not be you because there's the observer and the observer can listen to the thoughts in the head. Now, take another look at this. What's the voice saying in the head? Whether it's good or bad. Because that's gonna give you an indicator of your subconscious mind. Meaning, for example, Let's say you're someone who's working out, right? And in the voice in your head, while you're doing your push-ups, right? In the voice in your head, there's a self-talk. What is the self-talk, positive or negative? That's gonna tell you your relation to that experience. Let's say you're eating, right? Let's say you're eating a certain food and you're feeling bad about it. Again, it's gonna indicate again, your self-talk about how you feel about that subject. Let's say if you're a man watching this, what's your self-talk? When you think about the subject of talking to pretty woman, what, what is that? What's the voice in, head, in the head? Is it a negative? Is it a positive? Because this is going to translate in the creation of life. How do you build a relationship? Well, first and foremost, what's your self-talk? How do you talk to you when it comes to the relation of talking to another woman? What's your self-talk when it comes to the subject of making money? What's your self-talk in the subject of studying or any, any subject you want to improve in? Because so much of your evolution is going to be that. You're either creating a negative experience or you're creating the type of experience that you continue to grow and, and push light into. Whatever I resist, will persist. Use those words. Whatever you resist will persist. Whatever it is that you're resisting in life is going to continue happening because there, internally there's a resistance, there's a blockage that's now allowing you to pass through. So for example, you're resisting, you know, I don't know, working out, right? Well, then all the, the, the problems that you have, you have bad health, 
you don't like how you look, you feel insecure, all those things will persist because there's a resistance towards the, the goal that you have for yourself. Let's say you're in a relationship and everything's going really well and you have certain resistances. Take a look. You have blockages that aren't allowing you to feel fulfilled. You have blockages that aren't allowing you to open up certain channels of love, certain channels of understanding. And so much of, of our blockages, so much of these barriers that we have in ourselves is because in our past, we've had some sort of negative impression. And shout out to Michael Singer for using the word samskara and teaching this. You have certain blockages that aren't allowing you. There's another word that um, T. Harv Eker, it's called the secrets of the millionaire mind. I learned a lot from that book in my, pro, uh, grow, you know, in my evolution. I'm not saying read the book, but I'm saying he talks about the, the self-belief. I think El of Nana, Ron Hubbard, what's his name? Jordan Belfer always calls it, it's called limiting beliefs. There's these, there's these roots inside of us that we have limitations on. We have limiting beliefs on a lot of subjects when it comes to money, when it comes to health, when it comes to relationships. If a person has had negative experiences in relationships, it's gonna be very difficult for that person to find a success in a relationship with all the limiting beliefs that they've faced. So take a look, where are you limited at? Where do you have blockages in? Where is it that your character can grow and develop and evolve in? Because that's the only process that I'm on is Looking at my life, where am I having a resistance today? What are my responsibilities for the day? Keep it very simple. Keep it simple. What's your responsibility today? That if you were in the jungle, right? And you were a lion, right? Let's say you were an eagle, you were a lion, you are a gazelle. What's your responsibility to life? And I like to use this analogy that Michael Singer always uses. It's called, the only thing that's important in life is keeping your Shakti up. Shakti is energy. Keeping your energy up all day. All day. Notice when your, your energy starts to go down. Notice when you start to go dark. Where you start to dim inside. Where your voice, the inner self-talk is starting to sound weak and destroy itself. It's starting to say things like, oh man, I, you know, I don't want to do this shit anymore. And the best ways to see it is when you're, when you're doing an action that cre creates a lot of resistance. So for example, I remember when we were all doing the cold shower, right? There was a self-talk. You're about to jump in the cold shower. Oh, fuck, I can't do that. It's too cold, right? At some point, if you did that long enough, you, your self-talk would change. It would be like, damn, I enjoy this shit. I really look forward to this action now. At some point, if you didn't like working out, you're like, oh, dude, this is too much. As time goes forward, you learn to enjoy the self-talk changes. Now, what are some activities that I take upon all day is, look, I keep my life very simple. My life revolves around these things. Yoga, breath work, meditation, good eating, and studying all day. Everything else is irrelevant. Business is irrelevant. Relationships are irrelevant. The reason being is because if I don't do these things, I can't, my Shakti will dim, my Shakti will go down. So in order to have a good relationship, in order to have a good business, in order to conduct yourself properly in this life, you got to be able to have some sort of activities that raise your Shakti, that raise your energy. So let's say right now you're feeling a little, you got the midday crash, right? You can't wait to get home and just chill and kick your feet up. Take a look. What did you do today that's going to raise your Shakti? Part of it for me too is lecturing. I like to teach and talk to people, talk to my friends and share these ideas because it raises my Shakti. It makes me feel fulfilled when I talk to people. So much of our life is interacting with others. So much of our life is having conversation with friends. And thank God you have a friend. Look, if you have one person that you can call a friend, somebody that you can talk to, that's more than most people even have. People don't have friends in this life. Very few people actually have friends. Do you guys know that? Most girls, they don't have friends. Most guys, they don't have friends. But see here, we have a good community. We have people that we can talk to. People that aren't going to judge us. And when I say that, 
see that as the value that you have in your life. It's a, it's a value, it's a commodity. It's really an honor and a privilege to be able to have a friend. A friend is somebody that, that you can talk to in a times of need. Looks like I froze. Did I freeze? No. Let's see what's going on here. All right. I want to open it up. You guys have anything? Let's outflow it. Switch it up. I know this weekend we got a lot of things coming up. Some of you guys are going to be here in town. It's very exciting because I like to interact and just see how everybody's evolving and leveling up in life. And, um, you know, it's, it's really a privilege to see that, you know, I've immersed myself in my, my self-development in life. I made this the most important thing. Yeah, go ahead, Ahmed. Yeah, brother, I was going to ask you, um, I remember when we went to the mall, the, not, not the outdoor mall, but the second mall uh, during the pickup boot camp, and mm -hmm. you had asked me to open these two girls that were right behind us. Mm -hmm. And I, you could totally tell that I was resisting. I felt like yeah. this resistance, I, I wasn't, I didn't want to open them. And then until I finally opened them. And then I went back and then you told me, we'll continue talking to them. Like, mm -hmm. keep, they're like right behind you, open them. And I feel this, 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 that resistance. So after that experience, um, I told myself that I was going to keep on doing it mm -hmm. um, to force myself to do it. So this morning, as I was walking to, to the office, I park at a parking structure, second floor. And then as I was walking to the stairs, I saw this pretty girl that was, we were pretty much going to cross ways. And I, I walked a little faster um, so I could... My, my goal or my uh, my goal was to open her over the shoulder, mm -hmm. but I just, I, I kept on feeling that resistance, mm -hmm. but I still said what I wanted to say, which was just a good morning. I wasn't even going to open her up or anything like that. So um, is, is that just going to ease off as the more I do it or, or do you at, at this point uh, at the level that you're at, do you still feel that resistance when you're going to open someone like that? Mm -hmm. So to answer your question, I don't feel too much of a resistance. And let me share this with you guys. When I'm in, let's say, outside of the outside of the box, right? Outside of my room, outside of my house, right? And I'm engaging with the world. I'm no longer in this little head of little Fernando, right? There's a little Fernando who has these insecurities. There's a little Fernando, right? When I'm out in the world, I'm, I come from the idea of I'm here to serve mankind. I'm here to give to life. So that's part of the beast, the stoic beast philosophy is the whole morning process is for you to serve yourself, right? You're serving your own God. That's the yoga. That's the shower. That's the meditation. You're working on you. That's the studying. You're working on your character so that when you approach life, you're ready to serve mankind. If we were superheroes in a superhero game, right? The superhero wakes up, he starts to work out, he starts to meditate, he's reading, he's studying, he's working on his character. By the time it's time to show up to life and start to serve humanity, he's ready to go. So I like to live like that. I like to live with the idea of, hey, I'm here to serve mankind. It's not about me and what I want and what I'm trying to get out of life. Oh, she's a pretty girl. I want something out of her. It's not that. It's simply the understanding that he, I'm here as a repre representation of God. And the Bible says you were created in the image of God, right? All of us here, when I look at you guys, I see God in his creation. When I look at the trees, when I look at the birds, when I look at the sky, God is everywhere. God created this game for you and I to play and complement each other. So in this game of life, I recognize that there's other aspects of God that are all part of this puzzle in life, right? And we're here to complement one another. Now, I come from the understanding that, hey, whoever I get in communion, communication with, unity, communion, all these words are together, communion, unity, communities, union, it's bringing a togetherness, right? An integration. Yin and yang is an integration. Harmony is an integration. Communication is an integration. So when you get in communication with life, you bind you come together. So whenever I'm out in life, 
I'm not seeking to take something from life. I'm looking to get in communion with life, in communication with life, integrate with life. So, for example, in the sake of the event, right? In the relation, dating and relationships event. We're at the mall. To give you guys context, we're at the mall, right? It's a group of us. It's me, Jaime, I forgot who else was with us, maybe one other guy. And there's a group of two girls right behind us, very close. And I tell Jaime, Jaime, open these girls behind us. Why did I say that? The reason why I say that is because they were giving us proximity. They were in proximity of the, the trio, me, you, and, and whoever else was with us, right? They were very close. At some point, they were like right, right behind our shoulder. It felt as if we were a unity, a unit moving together. So in this sense, it was the right thing to do. Why? Because I don't know why they were so close to us. So what's the next right thing to do? You didn't have to go off your course and go chase a girl down because she was pretty and say, hey, you're so beautiful, I need to talk to you. No, violation. That's you taking from life. But right behind us, there's two girls, right? And we're at this event and we're learning this art of how to get in communion with life. You turn around and I say, just open them with, hey, uh, what did I tell you to say to them? Uh, the opener was, do you know where the nearest Jamba Juice is at? Yeah. And look, we were literally looking for a Jamba Juice, right? We we're looking for a Jamba Juice. We we're looking for something to drink. There's these two girls behind us. We're not locals. They're probably the locals, right? So I tell him, turn around and ask them, do you know where the local or the nearest Jamba Juice is at? What did they tell you? Uh, yeah, they said there was across the street. There wasn't one across in the mall. The street. See, we wouldn't have known that. We would have walked the whole mall looking for a Jamba Juice, not finding one. These two girls, they were, we, we came in communion. You ask them, hey, hey, hey guys, do you know where the nearest Jamba Juice is? They say, oh, it's across the street. Damn, for real? Oh, that's fucked up. That's so weird. Well, is there anything similar to a Jamba Juice in here? We're really looking for something refreshing to drink. Oh, I think there's a boba tea upstairs. I'm making this up right now. Oh, there's a boba tea upstairs. Oh, man, thank you guys so much. What, what brings you guys to the mall? Oh, we're looking for a graduation gift for a friend. What? No shit. What are you guys gonna thinking of getting? Oh, she likes blah, 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 and so-and-so. Now this interaction is bringing life up. It's complement life. They gave you an exchange, you gave them an exchange. By what? Good conversation, good interaction. Nothing was taken. So by the end of the conversation, you walk away happier, they walk away happier. Why? Because good energy was exchanged in this conversation. The idea of, let's say, hitting on a girl or the idea of trying to get something from a girl is what creates those resistances. I don't have that because I know I'm not doing that. If I was sexualizing every woman that I went out in public, who, nobody would want to be around me, dude. Nobody would want to even hang out with me. That's every guy who's sexually frustrated. They're out there doing that. They're out there sexually trying to get every woman. Now, granted, are they going to get a woman? Sure. Why? Because how many girls are out there sexualizing themselves? A lot. I see a bunch of ass cheeks. You're at the airport and there's ass cheeks hanging out. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing, dude? There's kids, there's, there's grandmas, there's children. This is not the place to be where your ass cheeks are hanging out of your little ass shorts. Like, who showed you this? Where are your standards as a de decent human being? <clears throat> so for the sake of the example, Jaime, is I don't come from the, the sense of I'm trying to take from life, I'm giving to life. And by giving to life, life will always, life will always give back to me. By me doing a good deed for another human being, nothing's going to be taken from me. Ideas are something that we can give as gifts. Look, the best gift you can give to somebody is a good idea because it's something that can never be taken from you. And let's say someone takes your idea and they go build an invention. Well, and that just tells you that you had a great idea that someone was able to capitalize on. That just tells you that what can you do with that idea? So again, if there's a resistance inside of telling a girl, hey, good morning. Let's say there's a pretty girl and you, you're trying to get in close proximity of her. Good, right? Get in proximity of her. Don't be like, hey, good morning from far away. Get close enough where she notices you. She recognizes you. She senses that there's no agenda from you. You're safe. And just say, have a good day. And in your sound, 
in the way you deliver it, she's going to upload everything that she needs to know about you. He's a good man. He's safe. That's very nice of him for saying that. Have a good day. Why? Because nobody says that. Why is it that only in the movies, neighbors are talking to each other like, hey, neighbor, how's it going? Good morning. Top of the morning to you, champ. Right? He goes, gets his morning car coffee. Hey, Jack, good to see you. Man, it's a good day. It's life everywhere. Everybody excited. He's the fucking man. Why is that only experiences in movies? I want to live that. I want to show up to different places and everybody become elevated the minute you walk in. Now that's an experience you can create. Right? Everywhere I go, if I'm there long enough, people will start to treat me that way. Because I'm not taking from life. I'm giving to life. Does that answer you, Jaime? Sir, thank you. Yeah, if there's any other question, because those are great, because like that's, that's the only way you're going to get better at this art, is having the proper frames to see it from. It'll allow you to free up your expression when it comes to saying hello to another person, another human being. Your character is what's going to get you the girl. Nothing else. Not your car, not your money. Look, I didn't have a fucking car. I don't have a car. I have a skateboard. I didn't have any money when I got my girl. Look, she's on here right now. Just so you guys are aware, there's a girl in here. But don't mind her. She's listening, watching. Uh, and that's why I can freely speak about these subjects because there's nothing that I'm trying to take from the person. I can openly speak about my life and there's a cleanness in the things I say. I'm not hiding this art because this art is so beautiful it's what binds people together it's what brings all of us here together to speak and listen it's what builds relationships it's what pushes life it's what, what it's what heals humanity it's what builds businesses it's what allows man to have the courage to say hello to two girls like that should be as simple as that is hey what's up what are you guys doing here You guys have really good energy. I can feel it right behind me. Are you guys sending positivity to me? Because I'm sending positivity to you. Boom. It's like, bah, bah, bah. Shit. Who is this person? Well, that's who, you're, you, that's who you need to find out. Who is Fernando? Right? Who is Jaime? Who is Octavio? Who is Tattoo Addicts? Who is Marcel? Who is Kimberly? Who is Camilo? Who are you? You're hiding behind all these fucking facades, you're hiding behind all these barriers, you're hiding behind all these shells. When you start to clean up the vessel, you start in the core, the center of you. Who are you? Who are you in the center? <laughs> We're watching a movie. He said, he, it's a very powerful movie. He says, who are you in the center? Who are you in your essence? What are your gifts to give to life? That if you had a gift, what's your gift to give to life? In the center of you, I know I'm a good human being and I know you're a good human being too. If you're a good human being, you're a good human being, then it's your ability to complement life and be a good human being to the rest of life. That if there is a pretty girl and she recognizes that you're a good human being because she's also a good human being, then damn it, life and nature would have it where you and that woman should mate. Because two human beings, a good, good, a good man and a good woman should be in a relationship. They should push life. They should have good children. It's where bad people try and take, and that's what we grew up. We grew up in a society seeing people take, seeing people lie and manipulate, seeing people deceive. In business, that's all you see is you see people trying to take more money from others. You see, in relationships, people try and take from others. Very few, very few do you ever see people willingly give. And that's one thing that changed in me is at some point in my evolution, as I started to learn, I started to improve my circle. I started to you know, put myself in a position to really be around players in life. When I first started in real estate and I started my self-development journey, you know, I started getting this ego. I'm like, well, you know, I'm above a lot of other people that I grew up with. You know, like people would always ask me, I'm like, hey, Fern, can I take you out to a coffee and just like learn from you? And I had this ego in my head. I'd be like, nah, bro, like I would, I would just be a dick to people. I would want, I wouldn't. Look, Camilo, I was like that to Camilo a bit. But Camilo is a good fucking person. And I'm glad I got to know him. 
And I'm glad we kept interacting. And he took the chance to say, hey, man, I really want to come around. But Camilo, before I even knew him, he would always ask me, like, hey, bro, let's go to the park. Let's go do jump rope. I didn't know the fucking guy. I was like, well, who are you, dude? Why would I spend some time with someone I don't know? Right? But then Camilo kept showing up. He kept being persistent. And then he's like, dude, I want to come to a camp. And I was like, all right, you're the type of guy. Look, he finally said, I'm here to invest in myself. What do I got to do? I want to hang out with you. I want to meet you. And he drove to my house and we met for the first time. And I remember seeing his, oh man, like it was like blue and emanated. I was like, damn, dude, that's so cool. So I stopped having this big ass ego. Like I'm so much greater than other people. And I started recognizing that, hey, I can help a lot of people. Doesn't mean I have to give them everything. Let them earn it like I've earned it. But maybe in the journey, you'll meet someone like a Camilo. You'll meet good people that you can help. You'll meet that girl that needs your help and appreciates your help. Not someone that you have to force or convince to be in your life. Fuck that shit. Your goodness should be so much your willingness to give and be kind and considerate. All those values are irreplaceable, man, because we're not living in a world like that. When's the last time someone has come around in your life and say, hey, let me help you, man. What do you need? I don't, I don't want anything in re return. I just want to help you. Why? Because I, I value you as a person. That's why. All right. Anything else? Grab something quick. You guys have got any other questions? That'd be great. And today, I, mean, I was looking at your pictures. I was like, man, this guy has evolved. You, you've leveled up a lot, bro. So take a note of that. You know, your character has evolved tremendously. Funny you mentioned that, brother, because um, who was it? I think it was yesterday. Yeah, I went to the gym. Uh, and as I was driving to the gym, I took a look at that picture. And I'm like, man, uh, I was in my head. And I'm like, man, you've been talking so much shit about yourself. Like, treat that. I was looking. I was basically how do I say it it's like it was the actual soul or the the experience the observer saying treat that person good because that's that's the that's the person that's your best friend yeah. basically that's how I was I was telling myself yeah man th that's so yeah. important it's so huge dude that's the self-image again that we're talking about right now the self-image was hating oneself for so long to now to the point where you're starting to learn to love yourself you see, if we if we were learned if we learned early on to love ourselves, we wouldn't have had to go through so much of the heartache, so much of the pain, so much of the bullshit that we went through, just because we didn't love ourselves. You know, if we just learned to love ourselves early on, we would have saved ourselves from so much bullshit, so much karmic shit, right? But look, it is where it is. We're here now, and the only thing that we can do to change our fate or to live a better life is to start being a good person in this life now, recognizing that we can make a difference now, that we can learn to love our character because we're in love with the journey of this. We know that one day this life is gonna end and none of this shit is permanent. Everybody here in this video right now will one day go, right? God forbid that we all have to be at each other's funerals, but it's gonna happen at some point. So while we're here, Let's learn to appreciate each other's existence, appreciate having one another, appreciate that as much as I impact you guys, you guys impact me as well. That the better you are, the better I am. The more that you evolve, the more I evolve. Because again, we have another reference of humanity, another reference of God being the best that he can be in this life, being the best that she can be in this life. And if by one person making a difference in their life, it, it starts to spread the seed of goodness into everybody else. And that's why I take this so, so importantly. That's why I made this the most important thing in my life is because I know that we are very much impacting the world, man. We very are, dude. Everywhere we go, everywhere we go, you got to recognize your ability and free up that expression inside, man, because it's a goddamn gift. It's a goddamn gift that anywhere you can go, your ability to communicate and be so in love with your life, it, it starts to awaken other people and it starts to show them, damn, dude, I don't, I don't love my life as much as Jaime loves his life. I want to be more like him. Not because 
he's the skinniest guy in the world, not because he has the nicest car in the world, but because that man is so much in love with himself. I want that. Because Camilo, he can overcome so much bullshit. He has a smile on his face. Anytime you meet the guy, he's always so positive, so upbeat. And if you only knew the shit that he was facing, damn, how much respect you would have for the guy. How hardworking Octavio is to take care of his family. He's a good, clean man. The minute he came into IMC Nation, everybody admired him. Everybody had good things to say about him. Everybody felt as if he was a brother for a long time. Everybody appreciates Tattoo Addicts for his art pieces, not just for his art, but for his creative genius, for his strength and character. He's a good friend to have around. Why? Because you feel better when your Tattoo Addicts is around. Your status goes up. Marcelo, hey, I met Carl, I had the privilege of meeting Marcelo once in LA. That's a good, strong man too. Hardworking every day, he's at work. That's the type of man you want to be around. So recognize these gifts that you have inside because you do impact everywhere you go. You do impact the people at restaurants. You know, go ahead, Tattoo. Boss, brother. Boss. I just wanted to um, uh, say how I feel, like, as far as, like, you. Like, you're a big inspiration. Um, and I see your your development and many, many things, just the way you speak and the things that you speak on. It's like, you could tell that you're really on the process and not only that, like you're constantly learning about, you know, relationships, communication, everything that you speak is, it comes from, comes from, um, from a good place. And, and just like what you were saying with, uh, with Jaime, like, once you're done serving yourself, like when you when you're out and about, it, you come from innocence. You're 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 giving light rather than than the opposite, right? You're you're giving light, and it's like you have good intentions, right? Whether you don't need anything from anybody, you're constantly uh, vibrating at a high level, and th there's no there's no denying that. I just wanted to say that real quick, bro. Yeah, thank you, brother. It means a lot. And that's just the truth, man. I wouldn't speak on anything that I, I don't live, you know? It's foolish to me to think that I would talk and sit here amongst you guys and be playing an act, right? To be in a relationship and be playing an act. There's no act. I'm not here to take from life. I know that anybody I come across is going to glow because I'm glowing inside. I feel good about me. I know I'm not doing life wrong. I know I'm giving to life. And just recognize that the more you give to this thing, the more you treat life with much more care, much more understanding. Like the next person you get in communication with, give him the time of day to understand them before you judge them. I know there's a voice inside of us that wants to judge. It wants to judge someone. Oh, they're not working that hard. Or, oh, he's, he's just lazy as fuck. And we want to judge people all the time. But take the time to just understand them. Why? Why is he like that? If let's say you hear someone at your work complaining all day and you're like, man, this motherfucker is always talking shit about something. He always has something negative to say. Take a look as to why he's like that and just understand him for a second. Learn to appreciate him, him or her. Because by giving to life, man, life gives so much back to you. And I'm here to play on nature's laws, man. I'm here to tap in with nature's code because I recognize that there's, there's an intelligence that's watching this game. There's an intelligence that's watching you and I. And we can't lie to it. We can't cheat it. We can't fool it. It's watching your actions all day. So make sure that you're giving a good image of self. Make sure that you're representing your God in the cleanest, most purest, most innocent image. So that if there is a girl behind you and you can say something very innocently, like, hey, do you know where the nearest Jamba Juice is? Oh, I'm so thirsty. Across the street? What? Are you kidding me? Ah, oh, I'm gonna die from thirst. Oh, I'm just kidding. Do you know if there's any good other smoothie drinks? I really want a smoothie right now. What's your favorite smoothie? Strawberry lemonade? I've never tried that. I like mango. Mango is good for me. 
Have you ever heard of a Mexican shake? Boom, 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 boom. I do, do, do silly shit like this all the time, right? But it just makes people laugh and it feels good and it's funny, right? Have you heard of Colombian shake? Boom, 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 right? And by doing shit like this, dude, you don't, you don't lose. You have a good time. Everywhere you go is fun. I like to have a fun time. I've always liked having fun. My essence is having fun. At my core, I'm just a funny guy, right? I'm a funny guy who likes to have fun and have good times with my friends, laugh, joke, play. It's like we're kids that never grew up. I want to be that. I don't want to grow up as an adult and take his life so serious and pay bills. I saw my parents do that and stress the fuck out all day, every day, because bills were always coming in. They never had enough money. They never went anywhere. I don't want to live like that. Fuck that. Look at the state of society. Everybody's living some normie ass shit. Whereas I'm a 25 year old man who feels like I've evolved lifetimes, but at the core of me, I'm still a fucking big ass kid, dude. Big ass kid who likes to sleep on the floor, have conversations with his friends, have pretty girls, have good times, have great experiences, fun times not taking anything from life there's an innocence when you live from innocence look man we we start to we started to lose our innocence people are losing their innocence by thinking they have to be bad in this life that's all the world is showing these days you go on tv and you start to see the bad in everything you start to see how movies and uh, videos and everything is so violent so so chaotic everything is so destructive but imagine we start to infiltrate the world with a bunch of good people recognizing that they are light i'm a warrior of the light i'm not for the dark i'm not for the dark world nope not me i represent team light and everywhere i go i'm going to use this weapon to shed out and destroy any darkness and bring light into another human being, another person, another experience. Why? Because, man, that's my essence. All right, anything else? Now we'll just wrap it up here. We got Beast Camp coming up. Um, so I'll take a, one more question, and if not, then we'll move forward. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Octavio, I see you about a mute. Yeah, it's not so much a question, but just uh, like, because when you pick up a new skill, let's say cold calling or a person that's out of shape, going to the gym, the inner self is going to have some resistance. But what I got out of it, at least, was like to reframe because your inner talk would be would be would be resistance, especially picking up a new a new skill. Right. It was just it was just more so that that's what I got out of it. It's totally I, don't know, I don't know if rewording it would help anybody. Yeah, that's exactly it. It's a reframe of the inner talk, first recognizing that someone in your head is talking, right? Let's say it is cold calling, right? There's a lot of resistances towards that, like, oh, fuck, people are going to reject me. You know, people are going to think that I'm bothering them. Oh, is this the good time? Is this the right time to call? Nate, what if I call them while they're at work and they don't want to talk? Are they going to be upset with me? All these little voices in the head, right? What if you came from the perspective of, look, man, I'm about to change someone's life right now. Someone out there, needs to hear me speak. Whether it's about real estate or whether it's about life or whether it's just having a good interaction on the phone, I know someone out there needs to hear of me today. And if it results to doing good business, if it results to building a friendship, if it results to a partnership, then damn it, blessings to life. But all I'm here to do is interact with life and get in communion with life, get in communication. We start to feel better when we get in communication with life. When we're not in communication, we're going dark, we're going dim. We start to decay. We start to get in our mind and dark and you know, start to destroy ourselves. But when you're in communication in life, it's very easy to see where your state of mind is at. Right now, if I was dark inside, I wouldn't be able to speak to you guys. I wouldn't be able to translate these feelings inside. All that we're doing right now is just translating feeling. And internally, I feel really good. I feel really good because all day I've been on my shit. So as I speak to you guys, I don't have to prepare on notes. 
I don't have to watch a lecture and listen to it a million times before I speak. I didn't even know what the fuck I was going to talk about before I jumped on here. I had no clue. But as it went forward, I knew at some point the message would get through. And that's what I'm here to share with you guys is trust your process, trust your essence as a being, trust that you're a good human being. And if you can tap into that, believe me, whatever cosmic intelligence is moving the sun and moving the moon and moving the planet also moves through you. And so you can tap into the divine. But first and foremost, we got to clean ourselves of any toxicity, any badness that we have in ourselves, anything that we want to take from life. And the more clean we are as a vessel, the more that life gives and grants you the gifts to speak, to communicate. Why is it that I can trust my communication and know that whatever comes out is going to be a positive manifestation? I can trust my words. Part of the reason why most people don't want to speak is because they're afraid of what might come out. Because something that they're holding on or withholding might come out and people might find them out. So people would rather not talk. They'd rather be, remain quiet. They'd rather not express themselves because they don't want to be seen because if they're seen, they're going to get caught. But see, the more clean I get, the more transparent I can be. The more I can share myself to the world and they can see my light from within. The closer you get to me, the more light you see. The more you get to understand me, the more you start to recognize, hey, he's not a bad person. He's actually a very good person. He's not here to damage life. He's here to do good to life. And I know that that seed inside of me also must live in you too. It has to. There's no way you would be here listening if that didn't exist in you. And so trust that so that you can, in the next moment in your life, interact and have a positive communion. Try it with your, your roommates. Try it with the people around you. Learn to acknowledge life. That's one thing if I was gonna teach anything is acknowledge life properly today. As you walk outside, acknowledge the sun, acknowledge the trees. Acknowledge the people around, acknowledge yourself. Say, damn, I'm here. <sighs> Fuck, it feels good to be alive. You see a pretty girl? Hey, it's nice to see you. You look really elegant today. Yeah, for sure. Oh, thank you. Yeah, for sure. Hey, you have a good day, okay? That's it. Not, do you have an Instagram? Can I get something from you? Then the exchange hasn't started there. If she wanted to give it to you, she'll give it to you. If she wanted to reach to you, she'll reach out to you. Believe me, they will. All right, anything else? Hi, Camilo, I see you. Nothing else, we'll end it here. No, no, I, I just want to say, no, I thank you. I'm, I'm getting like a, a better vibe these days. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, no, I just want to say thank you. You know, like it's getting better. My, my back, my life, you know, I, I start getting like my, again, my routine. And that's, that's the only thing that uh, raise the vibration, you know, keeping, keeping, keeping trying and trying to raise it. <laughs> You're looking really good, man. You're sounding really good too. Thanks. Yeah, right on, brother. Good to hear that you're healthy and you're getting better. All right, everybody. Well, it's been a pleasure. Thank you guys all for showing up. And I'll see you guys on the next one, all right? Os Jai Guru Dev.